This is one of the most destructive uh, aspects that shaitan now has. This destroys families. It destroys your heart. It will, it will put out your inner eye. You will not be able to have any spiritual experiences. Your heart will become like that mujahiyan, what the Prophet ﷺ said, a, a vessel that can't carry any good. إِلَّا مَا أُشْهِرِبَ مِنْ حَوَاهُ Because this is all hawa. And porne in, 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 in Greek means prostitute. One of the tribulations is the faces of prostitutes. People that Allah, there are people that are punished by giving them the tribulation of looking at the faces of prostitutes. And this is basically anybody who's in these films is a prostitute. Male or female, they're selling their bodies. Look at the stats, people. Look at the Muslim countries. This is the searches per capita. Look at looks what's happening to us. And then you're wondering why we're being, you know, why this punishment is coming down on us. What are, what's happening to our people? How has Shaitan been able to do this? Because we forgot, we left all the pr protection, we left the awrad, we left the, 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 the word of the Qur'an. The ahraz that the Prophet gave us to say every morning and evening. We're supposed to say these things. There's evil in the world. You're supposed to seek protection from it. We're supposed to protect ourselves, guard our hearts. This thing is a precious thing. It was created to know Allah. It wasn't created for these things. And Islam is a pure religion. The Muslims that migrated to, out of India called it Pakistan. The land of pure, purity. Muslims are supposed to be pak. They're supposed to be tayyib. The Prophet said, "Atayyibun the tayyibat." This is this will corrupt the heart. It will make it aswad mirbad, black. Internet websites: four point two million, twelve percent of total websites. Pornographic pages: three hundred and seventy-two million. These are sound stats. Daily pornographic search engine requests 68 million. 25% of total search engine requests. What's happening to us as a species? Daily pornographic emails, 2.5 billion. 8% of total emails. What's happening to us? Another major problem. We, the, the UN estimates there are more slaves today than any other time in human history. And most of it, 80% is sexual slavery. And this is another really serious problem, the problem of lust that we're really not dealing with in our society. I really think we're in a deep denial about the serious problem of lust in this culture. And, and one, one of the, the most important thermometers for it is pornography. The size of the industry now is 57 billion worldwide. It's a massive industry. These are, these are sound numbers, people. These are not exaggerated numbers. These are, these are taken from at one, one of our top universities. 12 billion in the US. Porn revenue is larger than all combined revenues of all professional football, baseball, and basketball franchises. US porn revenue exceeds the combined revenues of ABC, CBS, and NBC. If you look at the, the websites, 4.2 million, 12% of total websites now. Daily internet searches, 68 million. 25% of total searches. Monthly porn downloads, 1.5 billion. Websites offering illegal child pornography, over 100,000 websites. And for those of you who don't know, there's a deep web where there's just the darkness that goes on on the deep web. Um, and then 8 to 16 year olds ha who have viewed porn online in our country, 90%. Gluttony, overconsumption. Those who squander are like siblings of, of, uh, or the brethren of the demons. One of the things that we don't think about is the relationship to what we do and, and, and this darkness. People that are watching pornography are supporting human trafficking because many of the women in these films that are done here in the United States and outside the United States are women in sexual bondage. They're, they're not, you, you know, you have these girls that appear on CNN getting their degree at Duke and saying how much they love being a porn star. 
those represent a very, very, very tiny percentage of the actual women engaged in the porn industry, which degrades both men and women. And, and we as a people really need to think about why it is that pornography is the number one form of media now in the United States of America. We've, we've entered into a pornified culture. Pamela Paul wrote about this in a book called Pornified. It's one of the most disturbing books that I've read. Chris Hedges, in his book, The Empire of Illusion, the chapter, the second chapter of that, I actually regret reading it because it was so troubling and disturbing to me about what's happening in the culture of pornography. One of the pornographers recently wrote an open letter to Mitt Romney saying the Republican Party needs to tone down its anti-pornography rhetoric because they don't have their pulse on America. America has embraced pornography and it's about time the Republican Party embraced pornography. That is what we're dealing with. We are dealing with an incredibly vile force in this country that's corrosive and that is, is literally eviscerating the moral character that has always been there in this country. And if the Muslims don't become a voice, a rational voice, an intelligent voice, not a reactionary, pseudo-religious or bad religious voice, because there's a lot of bad religion out there, we have to be people rooted in intelligence in spirituality. Plato talks about the problem of stories in cultures and the corrosive effect they can have on youth. In his time, he was talking about the plays of Aristophanes. He was talking about some of the classical literature that today is read for moral edification. If he saw the type of stories that were now on a daily basis consumed by our young people, I think that he would completely write off the possibility for any real spirituality, any real metaphysical uh, aspect or element to this culture. So we have to realize the absolute danger of this. We need to be people that are providers and creators of a positive culture, a culture of life, not a culture of death. We used to call people that watch people in private acts of intimacy, they were called peeping toms. It's a crime in the United States. Now we have large numbers of people watching people in public acts of depravity and profanity, and we call these consumers, consumers of entertainment. Peeping toms are classified as psychologically ill people. And yet people that are consuming this culture that we have ample evidence of the harm that it's having. I listened to a lecture at the Witherspoon Institute on the effects of pornography in terms of the neuroplasticity of the brain and how brains become rewired and it was one of the most troubling talks I'd ever heard. And we now know that our young children from the ages of 12 to 17 are having exposures to pornography on a regular basis. Many, many young people. This is a serious problem in our culture and this is one of the problems. Alters the brain. People that watch a lot of pornography, neuroplasticity now will rewire their brains. So people that are watching pornography on a regular basis um, are actually, they have different brains than other people and, and they have obsessional thoughts and, and uh, it, they begin to objectify women. It, it, it creates deterioration of family. And over a long period of time, about 10 years of pornography watching leads to impotence. And this has been proven, uh, you know, that, that actually men will eventually become impotent from watching this because their, their arousal factor is no longer functioning anymore. So they, these are real problems that people aren't willing to think about or study and, and, and address. And in terms of the second problem, and I'll try to be as short, even though it's a really complicated problem, the Amr bin Ma'ruf and Nahi an al-Munkar is part of our tradition, but to change things physically is in the hands of the government. It's not in the hands of the people. Um, you, to change things with your tongue, you, you, can, you can do that if you know the ruling, if you're certain that something's prohibited and you're not going to create more harm. This is a condition that it doesn't lead to a greater tribulation and dhanna al-ifada, that you think there's benefit in it. So if there's not going to be any benefit in it, then, then you, you shouldn't do it either. I mean, they, there's a khilaf about that one. They say that one that ifada is... is uh, it, 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 you can even do it if there's no benefit. 
But in this day and age, I would argue that it's probably better if you don't think there's any benefit in it, just to keep your mouth shut because we've got road rage, we've got sick people, there's a lot of mental illness, you know, there's people on psychotropic drugs, uh, there's all kinds of problems. So the government uh, should do that. I think it's important that you, you have araf in your country, modesty is one of your customs, and those things need to be encouraged in people. And I would hate to see you lose those things. And it saddens me that you're telling me these things. But this is part of the modern world. We live in a global culture. Um, the internet has opened up Pandora's box. Uh, and so the, the, the evils of the internet have spread everywhere. But desensitization is a reality and people do become desensitized. Madonna actually said in Advocate magazine, which is a gay magazine, in an, in a, in an interview that she did for that magazine, uh, which is a homosexual magazine in the United States, she said that one of the reasons that she kisses girls in public um, on stage is because she wants people to get used to seeing this. They might initially be disgusted by it, but she said, but it also might excite them, and eventually they'll see it as a normal thing. So th these, these are people that are literally, they have agendas. They're, a they're advocating social change, and, and it's, it's, it's not for traditional values. She ended one of her songs by, with the, the three of them singing at the Grammys, uh, she ended it by saying, we're bored of the concept of right and wrong. We're bored of the concept of right and wrong. So these people are moral relativists, they don't believe, they're actually amoral, they, uh, or immoral and amoral. They, they don't believe in, in moral uh, concepts of right and wrong. They believe in the concept of do what thou wilt, and this is one of the first teachings of the prophets. If you have no shame, do whatever you want. Our prophet said that. Innam shit. And so part of the modern culture is to remove shame or modesty from people. And our prophet said every religion has a characteristic. And the characteristic of my religion is modesty. And, and children are modest by nature. They're not shameless. And, and you're, you're a shame-based, anthropologically, the Malay culture is traditionally a shame-based culture. Um, so it's important that you don't lose that. Because once you lose shame, uh, everything goes with it. So